Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we can be in your house this blessed Sunday. And Lord, as we come today on this day of Pentecost, we remember what you did for the disciples and for us. You promised to never leave us, and so when you went back to the Father's side, you gave us your very presence in a real way. You sent upon us and in us the Spirit of the Holy God. Today we give you thanks that God lives in us. The Holy Spirit, we thank you for the power you give us to be able to live this Christian life, to resist the devil, to flee from sin and strive for righteousness. Holy Spirit, we thank you for giving us the desire to be in church this day, for renewing our mind and, 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 and give us a love to worship and celebrate our God. So as we come and we seek to worship, you enable us so that we might truly Sing the praises of our God. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn, O Day of Rest and Gladness.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O oh Lord, kept the record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A lesson from our catechism. What does God forbid in the first commandment? When do people have other gods? The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 143 will be read, spoken responsibly. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness answer me, in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued my soul, he has crushed my life to the ground, he has made me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit fades within me, my heart within me is a call. I remember the days of old, I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a harsh land. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go, for to 
to you I lift up my soul. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Feel your name's sake, O Lord. Preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring my soul out of trouble. And in your steadfast love, you will cut off my enemies, and you will destroy all the adversaries of my soul. For I am your servant. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them, and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words, for these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and on signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass, that every one who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my word, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise. Let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. We confess with the Nicene Creed, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and the Lord Jesus Christ, the only God.
and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Ever since the creation, from there leading all the way into our present world, tribes, nations, and countries put great emphasis in becoming strong and secured against attacks and invasion. Especially in this present age, when battles are fought with sophisticated aircrafts, missiles, tanks, and other equipment, billions of dollars are spent in upgrades to the latest technology. Countries invest in tests and production of powerful bombs even at the risk of heavy sanctions. With the risk of getting, getting it wrong or starting a political debate from the news it seems one of the reasons for Russia declaring war on Ukraine has to do with security for Russia and its people. Security in the world rests upon becoming powerful militarily or aligning with great powers of the world through joining United Nations or just being friendly with the powerful nations around you. A hundred and fifty years after the flood, God's command to Noah and his three sons to repopulate the earth was bearing fruit. A great nation of people had arisen from the survivals out of the ark. And this is where our Old Testament takes us. Here they are, God's people. They're looking ahead to their future security. They thought to themselves that if they are to be safe and protected, they must build for themselves as a nation, a city, and a tower. And not any tower, but one that can be seen from great distances away, a true skyscraper. One with its top reaching into the heavens. And what is the reason for this massive endeavor? Let us make a name for ourselves. Lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. The whole idea is to secure, is to ensure that they remain together as one people in one city. And they want to always be recognized as such. What they didn't want was to spread out and split up all over the earth. Now we look at it and we may say, well, there can be nothing wrong with that. 
They are being wise to stick together. There is strength in number. It is good for their safety and protection. Is there really anything wrong with that? Yes, there is. As a starting point, it is a clear disregard for God's command. God said to Noah and his sons, And you be fruitful and multiply, increase greatly on the earth, and multiply in it. They are to spread out and populate the earth. Not huddle together in one place. Not kept to one city with one landmark, a tall tower leading them back to the same place. Now there is a better way for us to know that this that there is something wrong with their plans. We see how God viewed the situation. And the Lord says, Behold, they are one people and they have one language and this is only the beginning of what they will do. God sees far beyond our comprehension. This is just the start, says God. It only goes up from here. And again we might ask, what is the evil or danger here? Isn't becoming stronger, successful, independent, good? Is God against a nation having an identity, making a name for itself? No. But God sees where all this leads. Becoming powerful and secure often leads to a nation becoming self-reliant. Who needs God when you are capable of taking care of yourself? God comes down to confuse their language because he sees the real issue driving their behavior. Fear and distrust in God. The people are afraid of what could happen to them. They're afraid for their future well-being and security. Instead of trusting in God for their protection, they relied on their ability to build bricks and a city and a gigantic tower reaching into the heavens. And this was just the beginning. Fear. They were fearful. Fear makes us do sinful things. Fearful for her future will be fearful that her future will be difficult, the pregnant young woman aborts, aborts her perfectly healthy baby. Afraid of falling out with the crowd, young people attach themselves to gangs. Afraid of what your neighbor 
or co or, or co-worker will think of you, you never bring up the name of Jesus in your conversation. Afraid. Your savings won't be enough at retirement. You hoard all your money for yourself, refusing to help the needy or give generously to your struggling church. Afraid, God won't protect you from becoming critically ill from COVID, you are determined to stay away from worship indefinitely if that's how long a shred of the virus lingers. The confusion of the language here among God's people is an act of mercy. It was to lead them to trust and rely on God for everything, including their security. Here in Acts, on the day of Pentecost, God once again uses the gift of languages. This time, not to drive people away, far away, but to bring them together in one place where they can hear the good news. Here were all these people from various tribes, nations, and languages in their own traditions. They were all trying to re-establish a relationship with Creator God. In some ways, they were trying to build a tower to reach into the heavens to get up to God. None of their foolish attempts made any progress. None ever could. Nothing man can do will bring him any closer to God or make him accept, acceptable. No one can do anything to get up to God. God in his mercy came down to see what man was doing in his struggle with sin. God uses languages to help man understand and come to him. God bridged the gap between sinners and a holy God. Not with a tower, but with the cross and his son's suffering and death. With the gift of tongues, God enabled his disciples to preach the gospel of Jesus in languages they have never learned. God made it possible for all present then and now to hear the gospel, believe in Jesus, and receive forgiveness and life everlasting. In fear, we do crazy and sinful things. In love, God does amazing things to reach us, save us, and secure us with himself in his kingdom. Amen.
The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray. Father, we give you praise and thanks for watching over us and doing all that's necessary to keep us from the destruction of sin. You use languages as a tool of confusion to keep the people of Babel from turning away from you. Later, you use languages to make the good news understandable so sinners may come to believe in their Savior. Confound our evil plans. Bring clarity to all that's good and honorable. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for sending your Holy Spirit upon the disciples and upon us at our baptism. We pray that the Spirit will enable us with various gifts to serve you and bless your church. We thank you for the gift of languages. Enable us to use that gift to tell others about you so they too may come to know you and the salvation you bring. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, thank you for this place of worship. Let your spirit dominate this church. Let your will and your work be done here among us. May we and all who come here for worship experience your power week after week. May those who come with heavy hearts battered by sin and the accusations of the devil experience the freedom you give when sins are forgiven and the devil is defeated. May those with sickness and other infirmities receive a touch from your healing hand and be made well. May those who come not knowing you as Lord and Savior leave with you in their heart and the salvation they need for their soul. Make this place a place of miracles. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we lift up to you the Lutheran Women Missionary League Canada District Convention happening in St. Catherine's this week. Direct the worship, presentation, studies, and fellowship. Let it be enlightening and enriching for all the women who attend, especially our delegates, Joyce Norman and Mary Hassan. Grant also safe travel getting there and returning when it is over. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we ask your special touch upon Mary Hassan's friend, Sheila, who is diagnosed with cancer. Lord, we pray you would reveal yourself to her and if it be your will, you will let your healing power flow in her life. Above all, open our eyes to you, her Savior, God, and King. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters in our congregation who are sick, homebound, and isolated. Keep in your care, Bibi Posad, Dieter A. Pitts, Dorothy McCutcheon, 
Dory Monasami, Frida Pals, and Beth Williams. Hear our silent prayers now for others and our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. 
Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have an eternal life. In these last days you have poured out your Holy Spirit on your church, that your sons and daughters might proclaim the wonders of your salvation in Christ Jesus our Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon your gathered people, that faithfully eating and drinking the body and blood of your Son, we may go forth to proclaim his salvation to the ends of the earth. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the forgiveness of your sins. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. <coughs> Amen.
Good morning. Uh, on behalf of myself, uh, Benny Ann, and Guna, we'd like to thank everyone so much for sponsoring us last Sunday. We had our mission walk uh, through Morningside Park, and we raised uh, a little bit over $450. So we're thankful for everyone's um, contribution, as well as thank you for the mission service, the items that were collected at the back, as well as, last but not least, we thank Judy for the beautiful flowers that have enhanced her worship sanctuary today. Thank you. Good afternoon. I just want to remind you about next week picnic. Um, and we are at uh, the finishing touches. We see um, a, re a lot of cooperation and support. Uh, we still welcome your support in different, in various forms. If you have any question, you can ask Chandra or approach Chandra, myself, uh, and um, yeah, we're looking forward to have a good time next week. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I want to make sure I do justice here. I, with the barbecue, we encourage all of you to, if you're going to plan to come and you didn't sign yet, please do that. Um, the ladies asked me to put these pictures up. I want to make sure you see it because they want to give you proof <laughs> that they did walk. All right? I don't know if you can see it clearly but it almost looked like there was no pressure at all. I'm not sure if they went the full, full five miles, but they're having too much fun. There they are again. I think they went hiking or something. It wasn't. And then also, I don't know if you can see that, but they're giving you proof there that they finished at 9.50 p.m. and they did 11,341 steps. I don't know if that's each of them or, <laughs> or, or the total. All right. You had the announcement? Uh, yes. We want to say a special thank you to all of you. Uh, and this is coming from Joyce, well, from myself too. We encourage you to give your $5 every year to help the students at seminary. It goes to the seminary guild, and from the guild, the students are blessed by whatever they do for them, the projects and so forth. And so we want to say thank you to all of you. 48 of you give your $5. Some of you did willingly, and some, <laughs> some you, you were forced to give. But thank you. Thank you for your generous gifts. And we think we cover everything. Barbecue, and that's it. So we look forward to seeing you next week. Come ready, check the weather, and dress accordingly. If there's going to be some wind and you want your light jacket, do that. If you think your shorts will do it, come along. We'll tolerate you in shorts in church for one Sunday. <laughs> Have a blessed Lord's Day, and we'll see you next week.